Okay, in the next few videos, we're going to look at rational expressions, or, or more generally, well, rational functions. Right? Um, so, we've gone over polynomials, so we have a good idea of what a polynomial looks like. A rational expression is just a ratio of two polynomials. Okay, so we're looking at a ratio of polynomials. So something that looks like, say, p of x over q of x. Okay? So, for example, we might have something like x cubed plus x squared okay, over 4x squared minus 8x. Okay? That's a rational expression. Okay? If, I, if I were to assign a function to this, so it'd have a rational function. If I said f of x equals, okay, then it's a function. Um, so it's so a ratio of two polynomials, right? So maybe we, would, we do want to think of this as a, as a function. The first thing we might ask for such a function is what's the domain? Right? Here's a function. What's the domain of our function? Right? Um, now, we have this convention in calculus that if the domain is not specified, and it usually isn't, then the domain of our function is just going to be the largest set of real numbers for which our function is defined. Um, so for a rational expression, rational function, when is it defined? Well, it's defined for all x for which q of x is non-zero, right? That's the only real restriction here. We can't divide by zero. Otherwise, we know that polynomials are defined everywhere, right? They always give us a real number output, and a ratio of two real numbers is always defined as long as the one on the bottom is not zero, okay? So we can do this. So if we want to know where this thing is defined, we've got to factor it, okay? And so up top, we notice, hey, there's actually x squared is common to both. I can take out x squared. Is move x plus 1. On the bottom, uh, there's a 4 that's common and x. 4x times x minus 2. Okay? There's our, our fully factored version of this rational function. Um, now, from here we want to say, well, where is it defined, right? Yes, there's an x that can be cancelled, and we're going to cancel it, but We, we really only want to cancel if it's non-zero, right? So if x is zero, this is undefined. This expression is undefined if x is zero, because I get zero over zero. Um, so I don't want x to be zero. Uh, the other place where I don't want is I don't want x to be equal to two, because if x is equal to two, then x minus two is zero, okay? So I have those two zeros in the denominator. I want to avoid both of those. Now, as long as I stay away from those two, then yes, I can simplify. I can cancel this x with one of the two upstairs. Okay. And I'm going to get x times x plus 1 over 4 times x minus 2. All right. There we go. So now I've, I've simplified, right? One of the things you want to be very careful with when you're simplifying rational expressions is that you can only simplify once you've factored. Don't try to cancel things if you haven't factored top and bottom, right? It would not be valid for me to cancel an x squared here with an x squared down here. That doesn't work. I can only cancel once I've fully factored. Fully factored, I can look to cancel, but again, I should keep track of the fact that I cancel that x because that does affect the domain for my function, okay? So you should keep track of that domain, and you've simplified. Um, we're going to pause here. We're going to come back. We're going to look at some other information that we can get out of this thing once we've got it down to here.